Hi, my loves. Welcome back to the Star's Cartel channel. If you don't know, I am Star. Y'all, if my voice is, it's, it's because it's a little early, okay? It's, 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 go ahead and call me to record a video late last night and early this morning. I haven't finished, like, getting, waking up, basically. Anywho, the message I heard is don't be abrasive. The definition of for someone to call you abrasive means unkind and rude. And when God gave me this message, um, in my vision, I saw someone sitting like, um, like it was as if I was looking at a computer screen or a phone screen or an iPad, some kind of screen. And there was someone um, that was feeling attacked, okay? And it said, it was like, it said, don't be abrasive. Okay, let me go to the scripture. Scripture comes from Isaiah 66. Thus says the Lord, the heavens are my throne. The earth is my footstool. What kind of house can you build for me? What is to be my resting place? My hand made all these things. When all of them came to be, says the Lord, this is the one whom I approve, the lowly and afflicted man who trembles at my word. So here's the message, y'all, okay? Um, regardless to if you are someone that uh, you create videos or whatever it is that you do, it's something you do, and you do this for God's glory, okay? God is saying that um, there may be someone that looks at you and they feel like you are too aggressive. Or they feel like you are um, rude. Or they feel like you are doing this, you're doing that. Before God called me to go ahead and start recording, um, God was just reminding me of my general nature, okay? Like, but it's just where I'm from. I'm from Houston, okay? I'm from Houston. I'm not just from, I'm not from uh, River Oaks. I went to school in River Oaks, but I'm not from River Oaks. I am from Fungerton de Bracewood, okay? It's like 10 apartment complexes in one small area. It's a lot of people and there's a lot of stuff going on. This area, like West Up or Vest Up, okay? And it's not a game because they, they don't. I have told stories about where I met someone. I forgot. I think I met him at a pool party. There's a pool hall um, at the end of the block where I grew up. And um, they threw pool parties all the time. I met this guy out there. We're supposed to go on a date. This guy comes to pick me up. And he says, he ends up calling me saying, yo, I came over there. I was about to pick you up, but nah, man. He pulled up and uh, was riding down my block. And the guys that are from my block started firing off at his car. And he took off. He didn't know them. They didn't know him. And that was the problem. <laughs> like, that's that was the problem. You try to come over there and they don't know you. They going to be raising eyebrows. And long story short, for whoever this is for, there is somebody trying to tell you how you should behave when you are glorifying God. They are trying to tell you what you should do and how you should do it. They're trying to control the narrative of you. And they want, like, they just want this kind of control. And like, um, God is basically saying that this person is basic. They're trying to mold you into what they want you to be. And if you insist or if you refuse to turn into what they want you to be, they are going to market you off as abrasive, rude. Oh, they're, they're very, um, they're mean. Oh, they're very aggressive. Oh, they're very this. They're very that. And like, and, and it's just like, you cannot help being who you are. Just like I cannot help being who I am. I can't. I, I am who I am. 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 And I know that God, like God chose me, okay? This is the one whom I approve, the lowly and afflicted man who trembles at my word. And in reality, it, it's not, I, I just feel like God is saying that their opinion of you is not as important as God's opinion of you. God chose you for a reason. God wants you to be the whoever he called you to be for a reason, regardless of what it is. And you can't allow somebody, like God has said, this person don't have no control on who you gonna be. And if they don't have no control on who is gonna like you, nine out of 10, 
One thing that I learned, okay, when I was a beauty influencer, you can go on uh on live online and post something and you're trying to talk about one specific person and that's what this person does to you. They try to attack you through social media, okay? They're trying to attack you with social media. But God is saying that they don't even realize that they are not just attacking you because you're not the only person like that. Just like I am not the only woman like this. Houston is not even the only city with women that can be aggressive, okay? Because I met aggressive women in Dallas. I met aggressive women in the desert. I met aggressive women in Jamaica. Like it, everywhere that I have been, Ohio, it don't matter what. Well, every place that I have been, Florida, everywhere, it's aggressive people all over the world. Like, you can't just try to say that, oh, they're too aggressive. Oh, that's not, I don't like that. I don't like that. God says, and then in reality, the person that is trying to say this about you are aggressive too. They are aggressive too. They're just aggressive in a different way. And, you know, it's just kind of like, I, I, I just feel like God is saying that, um, don't allow that to buy. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. God said, the heavens are my throne. The earth is my footstool. What kind of house can you build for me? What is to be my resting place? And God says, this is not only a test for you. And it's a test for that person too. God is testing both of you. And he's like, what kind of house can you build for me? Stop pointing at what they're doing. Stop worried about what they're doing. And I feel like that's part of the message too. God is basically saying, you know, if somebody is constantly doing this, block them and keep it pushing. Like some people are really just like very aggressively competitive. Okay. Whereas here it's not like that. And you know, different areas create different people because of the different cultures and and it is what it is. But um, in a sense, regardless, God is saying, regardless of how this person is feeling about you, regardless to if they feel like they don't like you, regardless to what is behind them not liking you, God not worried about that. He said he did not choose you um, for them. It doesn't have anything. It's really none of their business who he chooses. He chooses who he pleases to choose. I didn't even mean to say that, but that's what God said. He chooses who he pleases to choose. This is the one whom I approve, the lowly and afflicted man that trembles at my word. You may have to experience when God blesses you with a gift, when God blesses you with the word, when God blesses you with the message. You may have to experience people saying, oh, I don't think that's true. Oh, I don't think God is going to do that for you. No, no, no. I don't think God really has that kind of blessing for you. I really don't believe that God would ever do anything like that for you. But God is saying, you know. This, like, how can they tell you what God has for you? How can how can they tell you what your gift is? How can somebody like basically this is an A and B conversation. When God chooses you, he is talking to you directly. It don't have nothing to do with all these other people. What their opinion really don't matter. It can't nobody come to me and tell me, oh, star, I don't believe that God can talk to you through all these different things. Baby, you can say whatever you want to. You can feel however you want to. You can walk around and think whatever you want to, but you can't tell me how God talks to me because God been talking to me since I was a little girl. And that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. It's just what it is. It's just what it is. But, you know, even if someone is being competitive with you and they want to try to um, put you down, they want to try to uh, dim your light. They want to try to make it seem as though God is not glory, like he using his glory within you, like his glory is not within you. God says, I in turn will choose ruthless treatment for them and bring upon them what they fear. So in the very moment that somebody is trying to question God's choice in choosing you, God says what they fear is what will come true. And in reality, it was going to come true regardless. It was going to come true regardless. What God says is for you, it's going to be for you regardless of how they feel about it. But the fact that they have decided to turn towards you and look at you like, ah, I got to stop them. I got to put a stop to it. No, no, no. God is using them. No, 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 no. God has to use me or God needs to use this person over here. Or no, I want God to use this person over here. I'm being reminded of the uh, Netflix series the governor and how there was a big three of men that had all this money and they were trying to use the uh government funds the taxpayers money 
for their own personal um like a, a, a what it, like a their own personal safety net, like for their own personal gain. They were accepting all of these contracts, but never pulling through on them. Just taking the money and spending it as they please. And they were working so hard to get the governor out of office so that they could elect the person they wanted to elect because they knew that he would allow them to steal from the uh, people as much as they wanted to. But God says, I will turn, I will, and I in turn will choose ruthless treatment for them, which is what happened. Okay. At the end of this entire series, they had gotten to a point where they were about to impeach her. They literally had went and paid everybody in the, um, that were in the government, in the uh, governor's office. They paid them all so that they would vote against her. They had went through all of the work. They they crossed their T's. They dotted their I's. They just knew she was going to be out of office. And in the last minute, there was an outrage from the people, from the public. When the public started finding out what was going on, when they found out that she was the one that was trying to get everything together and make everything the way it was supposed to be. And it put it, it put them in a position to where they realized it was over. And you know, at the end of the movie, that was like one of the guys was just like, I'm over this. I'm not about to keep fighting this. It's over. Okay. He said, I will go ahead and I'm going to take my wife on a vacation. I've been promising her for years. Should have been did that. Should have been did that. Should have been did that. God says he is going to bring up on them what they fear, exactly what they fear. When they thought, they thought, they thought, I think they said we had an impeachment in our laps and it still didn't work. It didn't work. She was going to go on and speak to the public and tell them that she resigned before they went through with the impeachment proceedings. But because they felt as though she was going to woo the opinion of the public, they decided to move the impeachment up. And the impeachment came back and uh, and she won. Okay. She won. She didn't have, she packed up all her stuff, planned a vacation for herself and her family and was just like, you know what? Good riddance. Good riddance, I don't have time for this. Good riddance, I don't have time for this. But in the midst, when she was just about to pack, when she was about to walk out the door, they said, no, no, no. You still governor. You still governor. Because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, no one listened. Because they did what was evil in my sight and chose what gave me this pleasure. God says, the, uh, the this is, in reality, they wouldn't even feel this way. In reality, they 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 should be in a place where they are happy for you. In reality, this should not be like this wouldn't be a punishment for them if they were not seeking to do evil, if they were not seeking to do wrong. The only reason this person finds it frustrating, they find it irritating, they find it painful, it is annoying to them that you are surpassing every single obstacle they put in front of you is because they are constantly putting them there. And they are constantly going off saying, oh, well, no, 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 God couldn't possibly choose them. No, 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 God would never put somebody like this in this position. No, 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 God only wants me to do this kind of thing. And every time they put some kind of roll bump in front of you, they trip and you keep going. Every time they try to put uh, the spikes in a roll, they don't understand how it's possible that you drive around them. But what they don't realize is because of God. It's because of God. Surely, if you were doing something to cause any kind of um, the stress upon God. Surely if you were doing something that was not of God, surely if you were doing something and you were not called to do it by God, the, the road, all these blocks and stuff that they keep putting up would work. But due to the fact that they are the ones that are going against what God said, due to the fact that they are the ones that are constantly doing evil in God's eyes, due to the fact that they are the ones that are wrong, every time they try to stop you, you swerve around and keep going. And God said, it is driving them insane. It is driving them mad. It's driving them crazy. They can't sleep at night. They're just so frustrated that every single time 
you keep it pushing. Every single time you overcome, you it's not going to ever be a day where this person is going to put some kind of roadblock in front of you and you're not going to get around it. It don't matter how big the roadblock is. It don't matter what they got going on. They think they can be like um, North Korea and lock you in. They feel as though they can lock you away in a prison. God says you are not in jail. You are not under punishment. You are not under wrath. They will not be able to do this to you. They can let it go, but they can't let it go because they have it fixed in their heads that they're right. And God keeps showing them they wrong. But instead of them listening to God, instead of them hearing what God is telling them, instead of them taking heed to God's word, they insist on attacking you. They insist on attacking you. Every time they do something to stop you, something bad happens to them. But yet and still, they insist on attacking you. Hmm. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word, you brethren who, because of my name, hate and reject, you say, let the Lord show his glory that we may see your joy, but they shall be put to shame. God says that this person, every time you say that God's glory will shine, every time you say that God, every time you sit around glorifying God, they get upset. Every time you sit around praising God, they get mad. Anytime you start speaking of God's majesty and his, like they, they get upset. They feel like this is supposed to be some kind of club that they have the key card to get into. They feel like you shouldn't be able to get into the club of glorifying God. No, it's not for you. They feel like it's not fair that you know God as well. They feel like you should not know God. God said he is not, he did not hire them to be a gatekeeper. No, he didn't. He did not hire them to stand guard in front of him and tell people who can come and see him and who can't. No, he did not. And they can sit there. They can be mad as they want to. They can uh, just hop about it and fall out on the floor. God said, whoever, he wants all the children to come to him, all the children to come to him. He don't need nobody like that in his camp. They are not acting as if they are a part of his team. They are acting as if they are on the enemy's team because they are trying to recruit people for the other side. They trying to tell certain people, well, you know what? I don't think God will like you very much. No, I don't think God will like you very You got to go. You got to go. You got to go over there. I, and, and you know, in reality, it's only two teams. So there's no way that this person can think in their minds, well, no, I'm just sending them to the side so they can get themselves together. No, they need to get themselves together with God. What you mean? What you mean? And I like I just feel like God is like the 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 foolery of this person. While they sitting up there trying to put you down, they trying to sit you down, they trying to close you off to being able to get to God. God says they are moving themselves further and further away from him. They themselves, they are moving themselves further and further away from him. A sound of roaring from the city, a sound from the temple, the sound of the Lord repaying his enemies, their desserts. God said these people, they don't even realize that they have become an enemy to God. Because like I said, they are recruiting people for the other team. Because if you're not on God's team, it's only one other team to be on. It don't matter like whatever little, uh, the sectors, you know, regardless if they with the people that will, I don't know, like the unbelievers, is, uh, unbeliever is an unbeliever, regardless if they are all the way fully blown into new age and witchcraft and spirituality and all that kind of stuff. Or if they are just somebody that say, you know what, I don't believe that God exists. I, I just feel like this person is pushing people over to that side. This person is t trying to tell people, no, God will never love you. No, God will never uh, want you. No, you can't sit around and glorify God. No, you can't testify of what God has done for you. When in reality, yes, God wants you to testify. Yes, he wants you to testify. Every time I talk about the side of town, I live that and the kind of things that I have lived through. I am a walking testimony. Why would God not want me to testify? Why would God not want me to testify about how I have been sleeping in houses and people came by doing drive-bys and guess what? I'm still here, unscathed. I didn't even know what was going on outside. Nothing but, nothing but God. 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 But some people would say, no, nah, God would never call somebody that used to live the kind of life you live. Why would he not? 
You think God don't love gangsters too? And it's not even to say that I'm a gangster, but you know, like you think God don't love people? God love everybody. 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 And it's preposterous to think that God has hired anybody to stand at his door and say who can and cannot get to him. He want everybody's soul to be saved. That means he wants the gangsters. He want the women that's running the streets, the men that's running the streets. He want people that are going to the club every night. He want people that insist on living all these sinful life. People that are in new age. He wants them to turn back away from that evil and come back to him. God want everybody. God want everybody. And any person that is standing in front of God saying that certain people can't get to him are acting out as an enemy to God. Don't like when God call you, you be you because God did not call you to be a mini me or somebody else. God had called you because he wants you to be yourself. Just like God calls me to tell testimonies all the time of the things that I've been through. And it's a lot of people that feel me and that understand that they can, how do I say it? Like y'all, like there are people that have had similar stories in their life. There are people that went through similar things in their life and God want every soul everybody he loved everybody as long as you still got a heartbeat and you still breathe and you still have an opportunity to turn your life around give your life to christ turn away from your sin and repent god said he want everybody and anybody standing in somebody's way of getting to him is an enemy to him that's the message that's the message. For those of y'all that don't know, the scripture that I'm reading is true and false worship. Okay. Isaiah 66. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe.